Hello everybody, you Lutcher for Life here, bringing guys a brand new video, and this is my first uh, fan mail from ever since I opened up my P.O. box. I went and checked it today, it's been about a week, and first thing we got, and this is from Connor Williams. <laughs> so thank you Connor, this is awesome. I, I genuinely wasn't expecting to get anything so quick. <laughs> Even with like people asking me to open up one or something, uh, I wasn't expecting it to get here this fast or anything. Uh, I think after this initial one, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna like stockpile and then open it all up on like a Tuesday or something. You know, call it like Fan Mail Tuesdays or something like that. And uh, if you ever want to send anything in, uh, want me to sign stuff or anything like that, just uh, the P.O. box is down below. You can find that in all my descriptions with all my recent videos. God, this tape is crazy. What the heck? <laughs> Uh, crazy powerful tape. Eh. Eh. My aunt doesn't believe me that I'm genuinely getting stuff from random people on the internet and thinks I'm ordering things and it's kind of annoying because I don't want her thinking that I'm going back against not ordering things. I, I have bad spending habits, honestly. Come on. Eh. God. I can't find my knife, so I gotta rely on scissors. <laughs> okay. Come on. Yeah. Come on. There we go. Come on. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. This is some crazy strong tape. What the hell? Okay. Alrighty, there we go. Whoa! Whoa, this is cool! Thank you, dude! Whoa! Holy crap! So, we got some old school... I've never, I don't actually own any... Well, now I do, I guess. I've never actually owned any old school uh, Chaotic cards. This is from Chaotic Now or Never. <laughs> I've never actually seen one of these in person. I've only ever seen pictures and stuff. This is so cool! So this is Twinhead. This is probably who would end up becoming a uh, um, Borf Majar if I had to take a guess. It's even got a code thing down there. That's so cool. Uh, Twinhead is a two-headed warrior who has a little bit of a personality disorder. One head leads tends to constantly disagree with the other head, and since they each control one half of Twinhead's body, moving around is sometimes difficult for this underworlder. <laughs> I have seen him get in a fight with himself. How weird is that? Ugar. Oh, wow. I gotta say, one thing that's really cool about the old uh, cards is that they, they they tended not to have, like, actual effects, but they did have all this that telling you about the card itself, and then sometimes, like, a little flavor text from somebody else talking about it. And then they'd tell you where the creature lives. This one, uh, twin head preferring, preferring to live in a wooden pillar. He's a three-star. Don't know what that means. He has one spell, so one magic counter, I guess. Uh, 40 wisdom, 55 power, 55 courage, and 40 speed. And I guess, is this his energy up here? I don't know. I, I've I've never seen old school chaotic cards. This is so cool. This is so, so cool. And then this, this is another, I didn't even know this was a thing until I randomly came across it about a year ago. This is something called uh, the Magician, the, the uh, what was it? Yeah, the Magician's Arch. This was a really cool thing where uh, in packs you would randomly be able to... Oh, wow, this is not when I go back in. Come on. You would randomly be able to pull these. These are harder to pull than Ultra Rares. And if you got, like, I think 12 of them or something like that, you got, like, some special cards or something, or you, like, unlocked the entire set. It was something like that. I can't remember uh, off the top of my head. But uh, you would punch in the codes, and then once you got a certain number of them, you'd get something like really, really cool. I don't remember off the top of my head what exactly you would get, but this is still really, really cool. Oh, cool! A chaotic deck box, dude. That's so awesome. I've actually been kind of, I've actually like wanted a new deck box. I ran out. Wow, Ultra Pool made these. Ultra. <laughs> wow. And it comes with fifty. Deck protectors, cool. I actually needed new card sleeves because I ran out for a, for a deck. <laughs> this is so cool. Dude, thank you. You are awesome. We got a bunch of packs in here. Uh, structure deck. 
Uh, definitely gonna open up these. Uh, oh wow, we got some cards in here as well. Uh, fire and stone cards. Holy crap, dude, you went all out. <laughs> you went all out. Oh my god. Uh, I'm almost, I, a part of me, a part of me doesn't want to open these. <laughs> but, uh, let's do it. Okay, so we got Ember Whip, which wasn't this attack used in, like, the show from the beginning, and they didn't release it until Fire and Stone. Uh, Bodle, Flam uh, Flame Drill, Researcher, and Silchaw's Mine. All of which are pretty good cards, I think. Uh, Ember Whip, I actually don't know. Uh, oh, it does an additional 10 damage to creatures of water, which is a pretty common elemental type. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know how you get Arctis. I, I've, I've had an Arctis in the past. No longer do. I traded them off, uh, I think, for one of my Ursuses. Uh, no, no, I pulled one and then I traded the other one. I can't remember. I got them somehow. Uh, so Silchal's mine. Regan, I actually already had this card. Uh, and I think I also had Silchal's Mine at one point. Uh, actually, no, I do know I did have it. It's pr Fire and Stone cards are surprisingly not hard to get. I don't have Gnar Rash, though. Uh, I think other than Arctis, he's the only one I don't have. Uh, other than this, which I just pulled. Uh, Armor of Earth and Might. Equal Creature of Earth takes 10 less damage from Magic and activated abilities. Wow, that's actually not half bad. Uh, especially for going against Underworld Burn. Uh, let's see here. We got a whole slew of packs here. Uh, is there anything under the paper? No? Okay. Uh, let's see here. We got some Dawn of Param, some Zoom of the Hive. Oh, God, did he put it in order? Uh, Silent Sands. Oh, I can should probably put it within in the screen. So we got some Dawn of Param. One, two, three. Uh, some uh, Zoom of the Hive, some Silent Sands, lots of Silent Sands. <laughs> Oh god, is it all going to be Silent Sands? <laughs> Silent Sands. I love Silent Sands. And then we got some Beyond the Doors, which... Uh, I actually haven't opened any Beyond the Doors in forever. They're so hard to get nowadays. Rise of the Oligarch. Some of that, too. Good lord, this is so cool. Turn of the Tide. Uh, Forged Unity. Uh, Forged Unity again. Uh, oh, some of the Premium Pack. I've never actually bought any of the Premium Pack. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, an OP tournament pack. Oh, that's so cool. And a pack of uh, Secrets of, of uh, the Lost City. So we got a lot of packs to open up here, guys. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> and then, of course, we got the Structure Deck. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and open up the Structure Deck. I'm kind of afraid to because knowing my luck, I'll burn out all my luck on the Structure Deck. <laughs> uh, and then we'll, we won't get any... Well, I don't know. I can't say we won't get anything good from the rest. But let's go ahead and open up the structure deck first. Uh, it'll be the quickest. For the most part, we know what we'll mostly get. Although, knowing my luck with these structure decks, it's going to be interesting to see what cards I get. So, because I do have a pretty good uh, habit of pulling good stuff. I'm actually going to oh, save this for the other... Uh, uh, stuff. I actually also need another one of these. I'm going to start teaching people at my locals how to play Chaotic and hey, got the most updated rulebook too, which I need as well. So, let's go ahead and pop this open. How cool would it be if I pulled an Ursus <laughs> or a Chromax? Uh, I'd actually prefer the Chromax because I already have my two Ursuses. So, we got the Overworld deck. That's pretty cool. Saving that master code. I think the Overworld deck is probably the weakest of all of them, but you do get a lot of good reprints in this. Uh, some pretty good cards overall. I love this card for elemental decks. Oh my god, this is such a cool thing to come home to after uh, work and everything. <laughs> stop, I was I almost did not stop by the PO, uh, my PO box, and I'm like, eh, I'll stop by, why the hell not? So, oh, we got a Vlar, okay, cool, and a Scoreblust, an Eggsy, and a... Uh, Verandas. Wow, this is warped to high hell. Holy crap. Oh, uh, God. I gotta say, I, I know like a lot of people complain about the card stock and stuff, but it got real bad towards the end. Uh, and you, you can see it clearly with the past creatures uh, and, and the cards and stuff. They are almost all warped to hell like this. It really is a shame. But still, we got a Vlar. He's pretty cool. An overall pretty good card. I like him a lot. Uh, pretty good stats, too. I think that's my one with the best energy. Um, goes with the overworld deck. So, now then, for this, uh, let's go and open up some Silent Sands first. I almost want to save the Silent Sands for last because I... <laughs> you guys keep sending me Silent Sands. Wow, okay, the super right up front. That's interesting. Got a Narlis. 
I don't actually have a Narlis now that I think about it. And that surprises me because he was easy to get since he was a promo for a while in a 10. Uh, damage which would be dealt to Narlis by Mujic uh, deals 0 instead. And you can remove 2 Mujic counter until the end of the turn. Damage which would be dealt to target creature by Mujic deals 0 damage instead. He's an okay card in my opinion. He's not the greatest. Uh, he seems to somehow uh, be in tandem with Lanker. Uh, who, from what I understand, people consider a good card. So... Uh, pretty interesting. This one seems to have good stats too. I'm gonna put wow, like all these are warped. We got Victor. That's so weird that the, the hollows were up front. <laughs> I oh my god. Another silent sands. I think I got the packs here pretty well split up evenly, so I think I'll start switching. So we got a reckless repre uh, reproach, a zelf, another titanics, some other good stuff. Echoes of Empty Hands. I'm going to go to put the rares over there. And just start a big stack of commons. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the pack of uh, Alliances Unraveled first. <laughs> well, next. Mix things up a bit, you know? Yeah. Of course, they have to have the ad for the crappy game. <laughs> I, I hate that Shadows of Lost City is as bad as it is. Got an Unda, Element here. Uh, Donmar, who is a pretty annoying card, honestly. Uh, we got a super rare, uh, Before the Storm. I've actually got a few copies of this card. This card is really good for Mepedian Strike decks. Um, we got a, uh, Vacuum Hemisphere. And, oh, uh, this is Marillion. Uh, uh, Therolin Azaya Spy. Uh, so, the Azaya, from what I understand, is a, one of the two set, uh, factions of the Merillians after they uh, split because they were going to go into a civil war after Ayn fell. Um, because Ayn, so the, the Merillians, they, they have an oligarchy, so a rule by few. So the chieftains are supposed to be the leaders. Well, Ayn basically usurped that and became a complete and total dictator. That's why he's called the oligarch, not the oligarchy. Uh, and so with his fall, the Morellians were without a leader, and of course they would split up and start fighting at each other. <laughs> uh, so it's very interesting. I really want to see where that story was going to go. It would be interesting to see if there were Morellians that weren't uh, ag in agreement with uh, in agreement. I'm, you know, I should say with uh, Ayn's plan to destroy everything, but had to go along with it or face a severe repercussions. Uh, and I wonder if the Isaiah would have been the good guys or the bad guys. <laughs> would have been interesting to see, but I digress. Now let's go ahead and switch back over to Silent Sands. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a bit weird. I just worked a nine-hour shift and it was hell. Oh wow, we got another super rare from Silent Sands. Uh, the Mepedium uh, Lounge. I don't think I. If I did have this card, uh, or if I do have this card, I don't remember. Uh, it's a pretty decent super rare if I remember right. Uh, Mirage, when an attack is played, its controller may flip a coin. If heads, the attack deals an additional 10 damage, and that creature may flip again. Uh, and that player may flip again. If tills, that player sacrifices his engaged creature. Okay, I take it back. It's a bad card. Um, got a White Todd, a Song of Desperation, a Hifton, some other cool stuff. Oh my god, this is so cool. You guys are awesome. Uh, actually, let's flip over to Beyond the Doors. I have not touched Beyond the Doors in forever. These packs are not easy to get. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, you guys are awesome. And Connor, you are awesome. Uh, oh, this pack flying back at me. So we got a Deceleration, a uh, Broken Edge, uh, Nourishing Nocturne, uh, Odd Opus, Lava Pond, Millions, Foothold. I love this card, although I, I love all the footholds. They're all such good cards. Uh, the best one is definitely the Thuar's Foothold, which, if I remember right, is the one that, re that basically Monster Reborns a Chieftain back. Uh, Mind Sink, Brim Flame! Oh my god! I was really wanting one of these guys. So, Beyond the Doors, one of the best things about it, especially for a kid or for uh, somebody who doesn't have a lot of money to sink into the game, had a lot of good commons. Ulu, uh, Brimflame, Akado, all these really good high energy, decent stats, good effects, commons that were just really good. And because of that, they became super, 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 super used. I remember 
it's just about every time I would duel against somebody on the drums online, um, somebody would be playing Akado, Brimflame, or Ulu. It was one of those three all the time. <laughs> and they're really good commons. And I don't have any Brimflame anymore. I remember I used to have a whole bunch of them, but I can't find them anymore. And I really wanted to play them in my, uh, in one of my, uh, in, <clears throat> in one of my, uh, what was it? Um, darn it. <laughs> I really wanted to play him in my Underworld Firepower deck. You know, the one with, like, focusing on just having, like, a Fire 25k or and stuff. Because while he's equipped with a card, with an, with an a, uh, with a Battle Gear, he gets Fire 5. So you give him, like, a, like, uh... A oh god, what's it called? A wet crack or a vile driver, and he gets fire ten. <laughs> you know, just even more damage. I'm putting him with my rares, okay, because he's just that good, and I want to make sure I grab him later. Okay, silent. Wow, another super rare. What the hell? <laughs> oh wow. Okay, super rare out of silent sands. Uh, just all super rares out of silent sands so far. That is so weird. So, Twister of Elements, if I remember right, this is a pretty good card. Uh, air and Water, search your attack deck for up to three attack cards and put them in your attack discard pile, then shuffle your attack deck. Yeah, this card is really good for uh, being able to just, you know, mill out your attack deck. And granted, you gotta have Air and Water, which is a really weird um, combination, but this is really good for Elementalist decks if you're playing like a... Uh, deck focusing on having a buttload of elements like a deck like an overworld deck with like uh heptad arctis and other dudes or if you're playing a uh even better a danian elementalist decks because danians are more likely to have air and water uh which is weird but <laughs> and this is a really good card overall uh rot cloud uh saperture of vile some other random cards. I, I'm kind of just honestly skipping over to commons from Silent Hands because I've opened so much of it. Uh, let's go to another Beyond the Doors. Uh, Gronmore is a really good card from Beyond the Doors. Uh, one of my, one of a lot of people's favorites uh, super rares. Uh, Trim Doll. Here's another really good uh, common uh, car creature from Beyond the Doors. He's just got good stats, good energy, fire five if he's. Uh, not Brain Wars, Water 5 if he is a Brain Wars creature. Uh, so yeah, uh, Deceleration, Broken Edge, uh, Snare Attack, which, let's see here. If your creature speed is more than your opposing creature's courage, deal 5 damage. If it isn't, opposing engaged creature loses 10 speed. Pretty good. Oh, he hung call in. One of my favorite personal Morellians. I love his name. I love his design. Uh, I can never tell if that is his mouth or his eyes, and I don't think the animators could either, because I always thought it was his mouth, and he just has like a big glowing mouth. But apparently, that's actually like a his eyes or something, and his or no, it's like a it, it's not his mouth. It's like his eye, and he's got like two little eyes up here too, and I don't know where his mouth is. It's so weird. I love this card though. <laughs> he's one of my favorite Morellians. The Loser Doom, really good attack for water deck. I'm actually going to separate that as well. Uh, let's see here. Grimdald. Uh, ditch of music counter. Heal 10 damage to target creature. And if he is uh, Brain Wars, do you deal, you heal 10 damage to target creature and it loses 10 wisdom. That's weird. Okay. Uh, Prism of Sloth. Yeah, there was a bunch of these Prism cards that focused on uh, basically gaining energy and then you could sacrifice it to make a creature lose uh, a certain amount of... Uh, of a discipline. So, anyways, so next up, another Silent Sands. So far, no Vivarf. I hope to make it to make to keep it that way. I don't want Vivarf ever. There's a reason I don't buy Silent Sands. <laughs> uh, okay, we got a Strain of Infection. It's so weird at the hop that like the rares and stuff are up front. Uh, Hurl the Cane. Uberon, one of my favorite war beasts. Uh, he's not particularly great anymore, but he is still a really cool card. I love his design and I love his effects. Uh, Blind Fury, Titanix, blah blah blah. Clodor, who can apparently destroy the whole world if he uh, were to ever be fully released. And then we got another, the last Beyond the Doors pack, actually. Uh, other than like the ultra rare Merillions, I don't remember what really good cards that were ultra rare from. Beyond the Doors were, uh, let's see here, Intense Polyphony? 
Uh, two, activate Hive. If your creature has taken 15 or more damage this turn, intense polyphony cost is zero. Huh. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Dakamal, Melee Trainer. Uh, Gravity Slam. Melody of Mirrored Actions. I love this card. Uh, Rapasak, a Hunkalin's foothold. Hey, we got a Hunkalin and we got his foothold. Pretty good card, too. Uh, Lightstone. I know a lot of people uh, just love her artwork. Oh, God. My legs. <laughs> oh, my legs. Ow. Sorry, I'm sitting on my floor doing this and it hurts like hell. My legs are falling asleep and they already are in a lot of pain from my work. <laughs> I work at a hardware store and it, it just. I, I'm on my feet all the time, and it hurts my legs and so much. Ugh, oh, God. Come on. There we go. So, another Silent Sands, and we got a Mephidim Mirage. Uh, the Crescent Swirl, and a Bicolon. Cool. Some other random stuff. Got a Melky. I love his artwork. He's just so cool. Alrighty. Now we got Rise of the Oligarch, which obviously focuses on Ayn and a few other cards. And this is where Marillion's really got expanded. Uh, personally, I want a Barakaton out of here. I used to have one, and then I traded him off, and that was stupid of me because Barakaton is not easy to get. <laughs> and I would really like to have another one. So let's see here. We got a Dialus. Uh, Frozen Fire. Mark spins preparation. This card is really good, and I think that the community ban list actually banned it. I can't remember, though. <laughs> it's really, really good. Uh, oh, wow, it's a den. Uh, a Grill Jodar, another pretty decent card that's a, easy to get rare for people. Uh, the Coral Smithy, pretty decent, if I remember correctly. Uh, let's see here. When a creature plays an attack that is both elemental types, fire and water, its controller may slot that creature's battle gear with any battle gear in its controller's discard pile. And it's okay. It seems like it's made to work with uh, Nunkworn, uh, especially considering that like he tends to lose his battle gear pretty easily. Hey, Makadin, he's pretty cool. Uh, Atticat, I love his remake. I mean, his retrain. It's so cool. And Atticat, I love his name too. He's just so cool. Atticat, Atticat. <laughs> oh my God. Alrighty. Song of Desperation. Rock Cloud, and a vial. I remember Vial being used in one episode of the cartoon, and I can't remember uh, how that went. <laughs> like I remember he was like in the drone, and he was like considered like the evil, like enemy to all musicians or something like that. Or no, that was the Narfall, I think. I can't remember. So swarming, uh, death, destruction, really good card for Danians. Uh, Biacon, I love this card's artwork. It looks like he's coming out of the eye of the Maelstrom. Uh, Might Singer's Requiem? God, that was really hard to read. Uh, destroy target creature of zero power. And <laughs> it literally is basically, I believe, uh, millions effect as an attack. I mean, as a music. It's partic not particularly good. And hey, we got a Nivena. Uh, super rare. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, Nivena, top tier waifu, honestly. But also, uh, she's just an overall pretty good card for Underworld decks. I do. Her. I have one already. I don't know if this one's better or worse than her off the top of my head, but this is pretty cool all already. And uh, I also really like Avena. I can't decide which one I like more, uh, but definitely in terms of effect, I feel like Nivena is better than Avena. I feel like that's going to start like some waifu wars down below, but oh well. Uh, Kuril, Freshwater Shard, pretty good card. Another Atticat, Rodoy. Uh, so this is where the Kurils were introduced in Rise of the Ogagark. And they introduced them with a few really good ones, and especially the uh, anti-tribe ones. These guys, uh, Rodoy, uh, Ikubra, um, God, what was the other one? Victar something? Or, I can't remember. Uh, and one other guy. Uh, they were all designed to basically kill the other tribes. They intimidate their specialty uh, discipline. And then they do an additional 5 damage to that tribe. And also they gain uh, 25 energy uh, when fighting a creature with uh, that tribe's most common element. With uh, Roldoy being, of course, water for Danians. And, of course, he does an extra 5 damage to Danians. Uh, really obnoxious cards overall. Got a Silent Sands. Yeah. 
Hey, we got it. <laughs> oh God, how many of these do I have already? So this is a him of the of teleportation. Pretty okay card. Just switches around uh, mirages. I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan of the mirage mechanic, uh, but it's still pretty cool that they really did try to make it pretty good. Then I think we got one more rise of the oligarch, and that is. Uh, this one here with uh, Amber Keem on the front here, if I remember his name being right. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. How cool would it be if I pulled an Ayn? <laughs> I already have an Ayn. I bought one for like, for like 20 bucks two years ago. I'm happy. I don't need another, but it would be cool. Hey, we got a battle gear. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. This isn't going to have the stuff up front. So we got the Kuril Amber Shard. These shards are so good overall. There are some bad ones, but the ones like your ant elements are pretty good. Uh, Flood, uh, Force Balls, <laughs> uh, Mick Bannon. That was the that was another one that was uh, that was one of the due to like perf uh, specialized in killing a particular tribe. Airdak. Oh, whoops. Uh, Gimway, really popular card. He's pretty good overall. He's like a mini Maxor, uh, although uh, Gal Track is really really good. Uh, Makadin, Flood Might. Falmakin. Oh, I gotta love Merlion so much. Uh, it's kind of hoping. I think Tartarex Psy Overloader is in that set. I can't remember. I was kind of hoping pull one. He's like one of the most expensive cards in the game. That's not Ursus or Chromax. <laughs> and then we got, wow, a miscut Blaze Barrage. Look at that, guys. It's missing a good chunk of the top here, and it's like extra down here. Uh, Blaze Barrage is another pretty good card. It basically lets you draw an attack card and discard an attack card. Helps you mill through your stuff. We've been getting a lot of supers from Silent Sands. That's weird. <laughs> Cemetery Slam. I'm not complaining though. It's awesome. And then we got Turn of the Tide. Oh boy, this set. This set. Lots of good stuff in it. But obviously the main thing is, if I remember correctly, Lord Von Blute's Servant of Ayn, which I actually do need to pick up another copy of him because I traded mine off like an idiot, or I sold it off, I can't remember. Phalanx Porticos, uh, Cat, 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 Cacophony, uh, Tongue Twister, Infectious, uh, Implosion, uh, Grefet Ra, really, I love this card's idea, uh, trying to mix, uh, Strike decks with, um, Warbeast decks, uh, so he's got low recklessness, he can protect your Conjurers, and he also protects your, uh, uh, Royals, which is pretty cool. Graphic Raw is an overall interesting card, but unfortunately not as good as uh, they would like for being able to play them in with uh, the Penny and Strike decks. Uh, doo -doo -doo, Dra or uh, Drabe is pretty annoying. <laughs> Got a Silent Sands. Got another Blaze Barrage. What the heck? Are these weighted? Did you send me weighted ones? Figure out which ones are which and then send me all the Silent Sands with supers? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, I hope I'm joking. I'm hoping not hitting it on the nail. <laughs> the head. But yeah, Blaze Barrage, again, already pretty good. Zapature. Uh, hey, there's Lanker. Uh, so this is a card that I think people have told me is pretty good. Lanker loses 5 energy until the end of the turn, and then you choose Courage, Power, Wisdom, or Speed. Target creature gains 15 in the Chosen Discipline until the end of the turn. So, theoretically, you could just have him lose 5 energy each for like each one, and then he'll have 5 energy left, and just pump up all your Disciplines, which is pretty good for certain decks, but not something I'm particularly keen on. Moving on, we got another turn of the Tide Pack. Yeah, come on. Yeah! Packs do not want to open. They just don't. Oh yeah, and if I remember, it's Turn of the Tide, where you have like a 1 in 300 chance of pulling a Mudinu, which is really, really cool. Uh, we got a Evelon, uh, Eggs Thingy, another Graphite Ra, uh, Blazer's Map Collection, and we got a Hollow. This is a Super Rare, and I'll read it here in a second. I can't read it upside down. Uh, let's see here. Coral of the Apparition. It's a Danium Egypt. Two, sacrifice an engaged ma unengaged mana bore. Then return target Danium from your discard pile. Okay, so it's basically Monster Reborn for Danians. Cool. Oh, God, my legs. Ugh. Well, it's mostly my left leg. I don't know why my left leg in particular is all pins and needles and it's driving me nuts. Alrighty. Wow, that's uh, odd. <laughs> it's backwards. 
So we got a natural pull. Uh, Entropy Modulator, Arbor Smash, something. Heptad's Crown, Reckless uh, Reproach. Heptad's Crown is a pretty good card overall. Really nice uh, battle gear letting you use anything. Funnily enough, it's horrible for Heptad. <laughs> Because Heptad can already do it. Yeah. Alrighty. And this is another turn of the tide. Let's see what we get. Alrighty. So we got one Berifian Axe. Phalanx Protocolus. Slime Slam. Oh. Uh, Bronze Fight. Uh, Key Bro. Pretty cool. And we got the Von Blut Sickle. Uh, pretty good card overall. Works best with on blue, obviously, but you can use it with other creatures. Uh, XMR, some other stuff. Oh my god, I gotta move my leg. Holy crap. Uh, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. Uh, I should have saved us for like Wednesday or something when I don't have work. <laughs> so we got Silent Sands. I don't care. Oh wow, another hollow. <laughs> No ultras yet, though. That's interesting. Alrighty, so we got another Warbeast Power Leash. I don't think I pulled one yet today, but I have now three of them. <laughs> it's a really good card. Song of Desperation. For some reason, everything else is upside down. Again, not going to really waste time. Oh, yeah, somebody corrected me. Apparently, Cult is German for cold, not Ukrainian. Sorry about that. Finally done, <laughs> finally done with Silent Sands, by the way. So we got uh, good old Forge Unity. This has Maxor and Kaor, Protector, Param, and, you know, the Fierce, respectively. Oh my god, my legs. Ugh. Okay. Okay, so, but it has some other good cards in it, too, that I don't remember which is which. <laughs> uh, but it does have some good cards in here. So it's a here. Uh, Denying Dirge? Uh, Klinka, Smart Smack, Carnival of Confusion, uh, Heart Sink, and whoa, cool, Blue Gun. I forgot he was in here. So first, let's move the rest out of here. So this is Blue Gun, uh, Winter Warrior, and a lot of people are theorizing that that's a frozen creature back there uh, because uh, it doesn't look like anything else. So Blue Gun, Winter Warrior. They should have called him Winter Soldier. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, I, I don't actually... I've never had this card before. <clears throat> so, he's an overworlder, obviously. I, <laughs> obviously. Uh, uh, two music counters. You use two. Target, account, target attack counts as the first attack this combat. Wow, that could be deadly if this was comboed with Takinam, but of course, she's loyal. Um, then Brain Wars. Target attack does not count as the first attack. <laughs> act as combat so yeah very interesting how this works really good card overall i feel like uh would be interesting to see if how if he could be used uh, in certain ways but i like him I, that's just so cool uh the fact that they alluded to the frozen from the very first set and we never got to see them even long after uh everything was said and done okay sorry just making sure that my aunt didn't text me back yet Waiting on food. Okay, same for the hive. Same for the hive. Considered the worst set in the game, where the only really particularly good card is Alexia, and we got a hollow, and it's Critalon. <clears throat> Critalon is okay. I'm trying to figure out if I want to play him or not. Basically, it makes it to where mana blowers in your graveyard are counted as mana blowers on the field. Uh, I think this is the one that I have with the best uh, energy lineup, which for a card that you want in the graveyard isn't exactly the best thing in the world. Like, you kind of just throw them at your opponent, let them die, and then hey. <laughs> My only real issue is that he's not a mana blower himself, so he doesn't count himself, which is annoying, but oh well. Uh, we got an Ice Cloak. Uh, reverberate. This used to be my favorite attack card as a kid because it, it was just a really good zero drop. Alrighty, now we got some Forge Unity. Oh, yes, I just opened a Forge Unity pack. Uh, but we got another one. So let's see if we can get out of here. Alrighty. Uh, Fearless Strike. Uh, Masa Blot. Uh, Jig of the Reinforcement. Uh, Triss Balin, who I. I am still surprised this card got past the sensors. Like seriously, uh, I know my my uh, my my glare is not the greatest, but like, good lord, how did they let that go through? Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> uh, I mean, just since tuning fork, 
And, ooh, this is, I think, considered to be one of the worst cover of shards, but I'm not complaining. So we got the Shard of Solitude. Any equipped creature gains 5 energy. While equipped creatures engaged, unengaged creatures cannot play music or activated abilities. Oh, that's actually not that bad. Why am I thinking it's bad? What the hell? So this card is actually really pretty good from the looks of it. Basically it makes it to where your opponent's creatures and your creatures can't do anything except, while they're, except for the ones that are battling. Which can be pretty good in certain situations. I like it. Moving on to another Xenon for the Hive Pack. Wow, this is warped to hell. <laughs> I, I can feel it through it. That's kind of insane. Oh yeah, Hammer Dune Chant Caller is in the set too. I really like him. <laughs> uh, Sunderground, Elemental Ener Denial, Tassinan, Tassinal, he's pretty good. Elementalist Pauldrons, you can never have too many of this. I love this card. Uh, basically gives your Elementalist all the elements in your team. Everything else is kind of mixed. And then we got an Infection, to a Parasite Token. I think they put a new one in like every block just for just mixing up the artwork. So we got a, another Forge Unity, and this is the last Forge Unity, actually. Let's see what we get. Okay. We got Will Trud, uh, Iflar's Improvisition. I think Iflar's in the set, too. And that's another card I need to get a hold of again. <laughs> uh, Gareth, uh, Jor, uh, Intertwined Melody. Kaibon Smek Blade. Oh well, it didn't get a, didn't get anything major, but eh, I'm not complaining. That's so cool. I thought about trying to see if I could buy some, uh, some Forge Unity. Oh wow. Okay, just throwing a Bear of Beyond at me. And yeah, this is Dawn of Peril now. Bear of Beyond. Really good card overall. I like him. Good stats. Good effect. Uh, Evaporize. I like it. <laughs> Uh, Venta, so cool. A Torwig! Hey, I don't actually have one of these. Uh, <laughs> Torwig's really good. It's air 5 for a creature. Uh, subject, sacrifice subject, deal 25 damage to target creatures. So some burn damage from Pedians. Song of True Sight. Velocitrap, a really good attack card, I think. Uh, at, least, at least for me, it's pretty good for Mepedians. Uh, let's see here. Miklon, Gespidin. Darmidus, oh my god, just all the memories. I'm gonna open up the next Donna Parent pack just for the heck of it. I, just memories. Ah, uh, god. Alrighty. <clears throat> Fanfare of the Vanishing, Tornado Tackle, Kaibon, Magalax, Flash Kick, Miklon, God, Zod, <laughs> Wama. <laughs> oh god. So many memories. I'm going to save the OP tournament pack and everything else. I'm going to save those two for the last because I've never actually opened one of these before. And then we got the good old Alliances Unraveled. Let's see what we can get out of here. To my knowledge, the best card in it is Zamul. Okay, so let's see here. We got a Quan, a Garip, Riverrands, and we got a super rare Brow Pussack. Condensation Ceremony, which, if you guys remember my previous fan uh, fan opening video, I talked about how Rao Pulsak seems like it is not a, uh, n that it, the name comes from the Marillions, like it was the Marillions homeland originally, because it, it's the ocean with no water, there is no water in the ocean anymore, so it's a desert, and this, to me, looks like the Marillions are trying to reflood it and make it an ocean again, and make it a new home for them. Which is so intriguing to me. And you know, that would also make the Mepedian uh, Desert a, a tropical forest again. Which is so incredibly interesting. I, I think it's just so, so cool. And I really wanted to see where this was going to go. Uh, especially if, they, if the, if the Mepedians are going to let them just go ahead and do that. We got Silchal, Dry Touch, uh, Sun Chariot of Kenset, pretty good card. Uh, Tecto Strike, pretty good card. Infernal Claws, just love them all. Alrighty, I'm going to save the OP tournament pack for last, and then we're going to do the premium pack, because the premium pack is actually a bunch of reprints. They basically reprinted a bunch of uh, really good cards that were sought after, and gave them this really crappy gold foil pr finish on it, And but it was a really good and easy way to get good cards from old sets. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we got... Oh god, that looks horrid. Uh, we got Hepcagon Hell, 
Uh, it's a four. It's a four drop attack. Thirty five damage. Each creature controlled by an opponent gains a magic counter. Uh, this card is nutty with Nadrin's fluid morphers foe. You drop this. You do thirty five damage to your opponent, and then they all gain magic counters. And then Nadrin fluid morphers foe gains six. <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, Tang of Toborn. Oh my god, I hate premium pack foiling so much. But Tang of Toborn is really good. Well. Not really good. He would have been really good if he didn't have crap energy. Why does Tang of Toborn max at like 35? It's so bad. Uh, Llama, uh, one of the few creatures with just plain defender. Just just plain defender. Uh, she did get a retrain in Alliances Unraveled, if I remember right. That was much better and also has just plain defender. So uh, she kind of got phased out, but oh well. And then we got... The Riverland Star, it's a pretty okay card. Uh, Draconis Stress Hold and the Mpedian Cactus. Uh, equipped creature gains 15 energy, I mean wisdom. If you, and if, grouped, if equipped creature is Mpedian, it has... Use a magic counter, this creature can move to any space on the board. It's okay. Now we got the OP Tournament Pack. These were given out at people who, I believe, uh, top tournaments. I'm not entirely sure on that. Uh, this pack contains a random assortment of three cards from the 20 card uh, 2008 OP tournament pack uh, stated odds reflect blah 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 okay so I have no idea what's actually in here but I know that they were pretty good about making sure that their tournament cards were not particularly broken so it's gonna be interesting especially since it's from the very beginning so we got a cataclysm which is basically a mini Almageddon uh, it's an okay card overall and then we got a Frightening Muck. I believe this is just an all art of another card in another set. And then we got uh, Deer Tax, uh, who just has Swift 1 and no elements. So, yeah, again, like the OP packs were never anything particularly amazing, in my opinion. They did have some really good cards in certain card and like certain cards, but a lot of times it was just like all arts or. Uh, slightly better versions of other cards like Cataclysm uh, as actually in my opinion a worse version of another card but however it is pretty nice for having multiple of that so yeah that is everything from Mr. Connor thank you Connor you are awesome dude this is just so crazy um, I know at least two of the people who wanted to send me stuff uh, were on the discord and everything so if you're Connor Williams, leave your comment uh, down below and I'll credit you as well on your thing. I know uh, somebody in particular, another YouTuber who's just kind of starting out, uh, wanted to send me some stuff. And I, if it's you, dude, uh, let me know and I will credit you down below in the comments as well. Uh, I would hope that you would have put something in here that I could, like, you know... I'd be able to let people know that it was you, but <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Connor. And hey, if you want to be able to send anything or if you want me to sign something for you, anything at all, uh, I got my P.O. box down below in, the, in uh, the description. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. See you all later. Peace out and goodbye.